Hello and welcome into another edition of the PHNX d podcast right here on PHNX. My name is Derek Montilla. Of course, I am the mayor of PHNX. This man is in charge of all the electricity in town. Sean DePaz. Yo, yo. And of course, it's my vice mayor, your Thunderstick, Jesse Friedman. Uh, and we are very excited to be joined today by Andy McCullough from The Athletic to talk about the MLB playoffs and Diamondbacks baseball. Andy, thank you so much for being here, man. Hey, thanks for having me. Yes, so the uh, Arizona Diamondbacks. I know that we uh, have our feelings about them, but what what is your thoughts on what this team has accomplished this year and kind of the way they've uh, emerged from where they were two seasons ago to kind of now being here part of the playoff race and and being a competitive young team that's fairly fun to watch? Yeah, I feel like the Diamondbacks sort of, in this era, like under Mike Hazen and uh, Tori Lovello, like their brand has always been like competence, right? Like yeah. they they catch the baseball, they play clean baseball, like they tend to play hard, they take extra bases, all that sort of stuff, and that benefits from the fact that there's a significant amount of incompetent, uh, you know, teams across the sport. Um, <laughs> and this is kind of, and the, you know, the, the group that they've assembled now, though, with like you know Corbin Carroll and Gabrielle Moreno and Zach Gallon, like they have like star power to match that in a way that uh, and young star power in a way that they kind of didn't, uh, you know, in that earlier incarnation, I'm thinking closer to like, you know, like 2017, 2018, those clubs. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, they've they've had a successful year, you know, that they will most likely make the postseason, um, which is, you know, a, a, a good achievement. Obviously, like it's been, I imagine it's been frustrating for you guys, like watching them, especially in July when the club <laughs> just kind of like fell apart. But, yes. you know, it's credit to them that they've kind of rectified things. They righted the ship after, you know, because August wasn't much better, but they're, they're in a decent spot. Um, you know, like I think they're, a, they, they are a, like a team that is not brutal to watch, I think, which is uh, <laughs> nice, right? Like, cause they have like exciting players. They, they don't play like sloppy games. Like, so yeah. it's a, it's a good aesthetic experience in addition to being like a decent club. So it's, you know, they're, it's a plus for me. I, I don't mind it. Yeah. There was a lot of frustration with fans when you, when you talk about that um, aspect of being fun to watch with, you know, like they they were very fun to watch, but they were, they blew a lot of games with the bullpen, not being able to hold leads late and things like that. Uh, it really does feel though, like lately uh, due to some roster changes and some other kind of key pickups to change their bullpen that they made uh, that, that things are, are much better. Like it doesn't have that feeling of dread uh, over the last couple of weeks when they get late in a game and have maybe a, a, a small lead that the uh, bullpen isn't necessarily it, it going to blow it. Like it felt at a, like a time where you could almost guarantee that if a game was close, things were on the line. You, you didn't feel very good about this bullpen uh, holding the game, but things have changed. And uh, that, that, particular one thing it feels like it's made it more fun for diamondbacks fans to watch this team late but uh this is a tough national league and i know for the most part we've talked a lot about how good the braves and the dodgers are versus kind of the rest of the field so uh i guess do you think that it's a fair assessment that the dodgers and, and the braves are kind of a distant gap between them and, and the rest of the national league teams yeah i mean and i think this year there's a pretty significant gap between the Braves and the Dodgers. Mm, um, yeah. I mean, I, the Braves to me are just such a relentless offensive machine. I think it's going to be really challenging if their lineup is clicking. It's going to be really challenging for anyone to beat them this postseason. But, you know, whatever. You can say that about teams every year, right? The, the Dodgers sure. last year were like a 120 true talent win team and, you know, went out in their first round. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I think that Atlanta and, you know, Los Angeles have sort of, They've got kind of a perpetual motion machine in some ways. I mean, with Atlanta, it's pretty simple in that they've, like, locked up their core for the next, like, six years. Like, all of their players are, you know, fairly <laughs> young and, you know, on kind of team-friendly extensions. Um, so they're just kind of, like – a juggernaut who you can all those guys play every day too so you can just like pencil in that lineup for the next like two or three years um and with the dodgers they just they are addicted to winning like they are just like <laughs> incapable of not winning kind of like it's, it's, they, they, wait, it they fall yeah. out of bed yeah they <laughs> fall out of bed and win like you know and and a lot of that right is a credit to you know the institutional culture that's been you know led you know led by andrew friedman and dave roberts and and the fact that like 
every day Dave Roberts gets to start his lineup with Freddie Freeman and Mookie Betts. Like, and just those two guys are, <laughs> you know, such like, it, you know, that gives you just such a head start on the rest of the sport when you're able to have two, those two players at the top of your lineup. And so, yeah, I mean, I feel like the rest of the league, you know, there was a thought, uh, especially in Los Angeles, they felt that the Padres were going to be a real significant uh, contender this year. Obviously, San Diego is, you know, flamed out as they tend to do. And, um, you know, and I think there's like, at least with the Dodgers, right, there's like a healthy respect for the D-backs because, again, as I said, like they play good baseball, like they play hard, like they're, you know, not an easy out. But I think it just in talent, there's a there's a decent gap there for sure. Um, yeah. Andy, would you say, you know, from the Diamondbacks perspective, there's been this perception for years that even if the Diamondbacks do come around and they develop some good young players as they have this year and you know, we've started to see some of that success pan out this year. There's still this sense that, you know, as you said, the, the Dodgers just roll out of bed and they just win. And, you know, they they just clinched another NL West title. Uh, they win the NL West basically every single season. It's just sort of a, a given. It's just kind of an assumption going into uh, every year at this point. Are the Diamondbacks kind of in a position where, you know, sure, they can make the playoffs, they can make some noise, but... They're basically uh, going to have to do it via the wild card uh, every year for seemingly forever because the Dodgers are just doing what the Dodgers do. Sorry, I have to move my cat. He's being very uh, challenging. The, that's oh, all right. The cat, the cat can join us for sure. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not. It's it's more that he's he's like actively trying to close my laptop. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, he's this is he's like, is this a Diamondbacks the... podcast? Let's get rid of this. Yeah, yeah, no. This is this is his shift at the being bad factory. So this year. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah. So I guess like the you know the point you're making like are they perpet are the Diamondbacks like perpetually assigned to the wild card? Not exactly. However, like it's a significant you know mountain facing them every yeah. single year. Just to have a team yeah. as well financed as well run as the Dodgers, a team that you know tends to like. One, they've they've like hit on some of their major long term free agent guys. Two, they've been able to you know uh, overcome the mistakes they've made in free agency. You know, guys like, like signing Trevor Bauer has you know affected their reputation like with around the league, but didn't affect their like day to day performance per se. Right, like it was embarrassing, yeah. but they still won a ton of games. Um, with Arizona, the idea has always been they need to kind of assemble a wave of prospects right like who can come in and so as all of a sudden you can actually like see okay this is what you know a real starting nine who looks like right and there's there's some guys who are um you know like already there right like carol's part of that moreno's yeah. part of that you know, imagine jordan lawler's supposed to be part of it you know drew jones would theoretically be part of it right and so if you can get like 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 theoretical all-star players, um, you know, all together at once, then you have a chance to actually compete. But it just makes it harder to do it for longer than like a two, three, maybe four-year window, probably closer to two or three. You know, it just it just means you kind of have to really protect your bullets and not, you know, try it. Like you have to understand the years where you don't have a real chance to compete and versus the years where, yeah. you know – like you're when if when if all those guys are up and they're sort of 24 to 27 like that's the time um you know that's the time to try and overtake them but it's just hard to sync it up i mean it's just a, it's a real challenge it seems like for for the diamondbacks this year i mean as we were talking about uh before we before we hopped on here you know if you let 36 hours pass the the wild card standings change dramatically <laughs> and you know like who you're playing in the first round who you're playing in the second round changes yeah. Uh, you know, very rapidly in, in this competitive environment that we have right now. If you're the D-backs right now, Andy, this is sort of the million dollar question that we've been trying to answer. Do you want the Brewers in the first round or the Phillies, if those are your two options? Oh, that's a good question. Um, well, the Phillies sometimes might just stop hitting for two days. Uh, the problem <laughs> is, but also the Brewers never really hit, but the Brewers always <laughs> pitch. Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess you just rather play the Brewers. I think the Phillies are probably a slightly better team and they just have, they have star power. Hold on. I'm sorry. I'll be right. I'm going to, I need to actually physically move this cat. Oh no, that's <laughs> fine. That's fine. Uh, some, sometimes pets get in the way of our podcast and we are fine with that. We are absolutely fine with that, but, um, we are definitely, uh, thrilled to have Andy here and make sure to check out, uh, his book that he's releasing next spring. Uh, it's the last of his kind. 
Clayton Kershaw and the Burden of Greatness. There's a, there's a big market for that book here right here in Arizona. Arizona. I know you guys are huge I'm Clayton a big Kershaw fans. Baseball book guy in general. Yeah, I've been reading a lot of baseball books. So. I have been too. Yeah, baseball books. Uh, I I find them fascinating, especially because at times we really do know very little about uh, thing like famous incidents that happen, things yeah. that happen, uh, you know, championship seasons that happen. And yeah. like, it's always great to get that insight, but, uh, Andy's back. Uh, and of course, Sorry, his cat. Guys. no, that's fine. <laughs> his, 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 again, his cats being bad, but that's fine. We're, we're, we're fine with that. Um, we, we are big fans of cats around here. Uh, Baxter, we know him. Uh, but yeah, so we were also talking about like, of course the playoff format and we've kind of had some disagreements yeah. here in house about, uh, the 12 team playoff format how the you know the 162 game season at times can come down to you know allowing these extra teams in and and it, it even seems like a disadvantage maybe a little bit for the teams that have won the most games in baseball so what what are your thoughts on uh on the the way it is because i will say we we do also find it very exciting considering this allowed yeah. the diamondbacks to be a part of this wild card race uh, for so long yeah, I mean, I, I I was not a fan of expanding the playoffs. I think they were already sort of over-expanded. Um, I think just because it incentivizes teams to race towards the middle rather than race towards the top. Yeah. Um, because you have teams who will just sort of shoot for winning 88 games every year, uh, knowing that that'll probably get you in the postseason mix. And that, you know, tends to suppress the market for players. But more importantly for the fans, it makes it so that teams are less willing to be aggressive at the trade deadline because, you know, what you're actually acquiring has less value, especially in terms of rentals. You know, there's the constant like, well, you know, do we really want to, you know, get a rental to go for a wild card spot or whatever? Right. right, right. Um, and so but like, it's fine. It's also it's fine. Like I've had a chance to watch, you know, just for work. I've had to watch a lot of teams that are kind of in the like 86 to 90 win range, which like is okay. You know, it's like sort of, you know, above average baseball is all right. You know, most yeah. of those teams have like two or three good players. So that's good. Um, yeah. I mean, I think it's fine. Um, I don't, I have like, so I have absolutely zero sympathy for the top seeds. If they lose after a break, I just I do I like if teams use that as an excuse, absolute loser shit. Like win the games in front yeah. of you. Like the, yeah. you know, like the Houston Astros had a had time off last year, ran the table, like no problem. The best team wins. Like I just I that part of it, like doesn't matter what the format is, the best team the team that plays the best will win, basically. Yeah. Um but yeah, I wasn't I wasn't crazy about expanding the postseason. I'm I'm conflicted myself just because I do like the more exciting you know, fact of, of, you know, more teams making it in and, and what that can mean for mm -hmm. just fans watching baseball and being able to root on their team. I also like the idea of, you know, obviously the balanced schedule, playing more teams, getting to see more teams that we don't normally see. But even that now kind of seems like it's drifted away because like we played so many teams within our division for the purpose of deciding a true winner of that division. And now that that's even less like it feels like, the, I don't know. It's like the 162 game season at times feels like it conflicts with all of these changes that they're trying to make as far as the the expanded you know schedule and and expanding the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, I think for fans, the obvious uh, fix would be to go to like a 154 game season. Um, but like fans don't really have a say in it, right? It's between sure. the players and the owners, and the players will do not want to uh, give up the salary they would be, you know, right. like. Yeah. Uh, they would be sacrificing with that and right. the owners aren't going to pay you 162 game wage for 154 game season. And so it would like, it would redo the salary structure in a way that's just kind of intractable, I think. Um, so yeah, you know, it is what it is. Still a good product, you know, yeah. pitch clock's yeah. great. What, what are your thoughts on the, uh, obviously with the, the new playoff format, like the lack of a game 163 and the tiebreaker, something that Jesse brought up on the show the other day, like a, a series against the Marlins way back in April or whatever it was, could ultimately decide whether or not the Diamondbacks make the playoffs. Thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think from a terms of like the cleanliness of the narrative, right? Game one sixty three is better. 
Um, yeah. You know, like I remember covering the 2018 uh, Dodgers when I was at the LA Times. And that year with the Dodgers, the uh, Rockies and the D-backs were all very, very close at the end. And there was kind of a freeway race down to the last day. And then the Dodgers ended up playing the Rockies in game 163 and, you know, winning the division. And that was like a super exciting, you know, week or so. Um, You know, so losing that, I think, I think is a bummer. But the counter is that you get another round of the postseason that sort of functions in that way it just doesn't have like like game 163 sounds cool it like does. oh we're playing game 163 yeah. right where it's like we're it's in badass. the we're in the american league wild card round like no that sucks like game yeah. 163, <laughs> you know, that's the you know it's but it's it's really you know it's six like they're just different versions of the same thing which is elimination baseball in october which is fun yeah andy uh later on in the show we're going to talk about tory lavello and and his opportunity to potentially you know win the the manager of the year award that's sort of a trend here in arizona every time the diamondbacks make the playoffs their manager inevitably wins manager of the year it's happened <laughs> uh, the last three times this team has made the postseason dating back almost 20 well, years it's a prerequisite it, actually. It, it somehow yeah. seems to be just ingrained into the universe but what i want to ask you is just about the manager of the year award in general and how uh, fortunately i'm not voting uh, for manager of the year uh, this year uh, but I, I feel like I, I never would really want to because it's just it, it's an impossible thing to really judge for us as outsiders. I mean, I think we as as, as writers and reporters, we maybe see, you know, five percent of what a manager actually does on a day to day basis. And so we wind up just basing it off of these narratives of like expectations coming into the season versus what teams actually accomplish. To me, it, it just seems like an impossible award. And I don't know if we're allowed to get rid of it. I don't know if I see that happening, but it, it just seems kind of silly the way that it's set up. Yeah, I mean, you, I mean, yeah, you explained it pretty well, I think. Um, you know, the I, I don't vote for the BBWA awards. I don't vote for the Hall of Fame. Um, I just they don't pay me for it. And so it's not worth the time to invest um, <laughs> in it. If they offer me money, I'd consider it. Uh, but, but, yeah. Like, respect dude like you man like dude, you know how hard it is to try and decide like who's gonna yeah. win a cy young every year <laughs> that's crazy like, to me <laughs> the, the cy young's impossible now you know yeah. uh anyway yeah i think jesse the points you made with manager of the year i totally agree like i i think it's a it's a nice idea as an award um because i think it is nice to recognize you know the uh that you should you know I think it's a nice idea to recognize a manager for like doing a, a job that's above and beyond, but yeah, it's really impossible to know. It's, a, it's, it's, there's so much limited information. And even with, even if you really know, a, you know, a team intimately, well, you're probably only getting, you're not getting enough. You're not getting a hundred percent certainly of everything that goes on within the clubhouse, within day-to-day -day decision making, and then extrapolate that for a fourteen other team voting pool. Like it's just it's kind of impossible to to decide. Um, so, but it like I, I don't know. I the BBWAA will never uh, will never uh, push towards giving up one of our awards, and sure. so uh, I don't I don't foresee. <laughs> that in the future um and so you just kind of look at it as like look you reward some manager who everyone's team picked to finish fourth who ended up finishing second and it's like all right well nice for that guy hope he had, yeah. a, hope he had yeah. a bonus or something attached to it. um so we talked a little bit about the gap in the national league there between the braves and, and the dodgers right but uh, are there any wild card teams that you find to be dangerous is there any teams that you think that could make you a splash i mean i know we're we're, we're very realistic about it here and about, about the difference yeah. in the competition level right but at the same time it, it it is the playoffs and of course anybody can get hot at the right time and do what we saw kind of the phillies do last last postseason yeah i mean i think with arizona like in a five game series they're dangerous i think in a seven game you're the bullpen this rotation just kind of gets exposed it's just yes. kind of tough but yeah we agree with that you know they've they have some really good players too. Like you, you know, I, it's just like in order to do it, it would be like you'd have to be using Zach Gallon on short rest, you know, yeah. like the Dodgers <laughs> used to with like Clayton Kershaw, and it's like yeah. that doesn't happen anymore. Teams don't teams don't do that. Yeah. Um. But you know, in terms of wild card teams, like the Phillies, man. I mean, the the you know they're they are certifiably nuts. Um, <laughs> you know, they have star power. They don't give a shit about pressure like yeah. you know they did it last year like yeah they're the one 
National League wild card. I feel like um, who could stand and trade with Atlanta, with the Dodgers. I just feel like, you know, the Giants, I mean, the Giants might be out of it, actually, because they just got, you know, the D-backs kind of put them to sleep this weekend or this week um you know the cubs no uh the marlins no um yeah so i you know yeah i, I think it's really just the phillies but of the you know the, the thing with the d-backs is in a five game series i i feel like they would be prepared they would be you know the game plan really well shout out to dan heron um yeah. you know they do they do a good job within their means it's just i think in a seven game series it becomes hard to to see that pitching staff making it through an elite lineup, you know, six or you know, in five or six or seven games. We don't even know what they would do for the three game yeah. series in the wild card right. round. And then if they made it past <laughs> that into the first round, right? So like, I mean, we we know obviously they want Zach Gallon and Merrill Kelly out there as much as possible. Yeah. But they really don't even have a full starting five man rotation. And I just don't know. Like we we don't know what they would do just to to try to maximize that and and to get those guys as many games in the playoffs should they win and and you know go go past that first wild card round yeah i mean i i oh man this this poor young man i've been purposely mispronouncing his last name all year uh but brandon fought you got uh, it. That's, it. He, that's it no man. i know we uh, on our podcast we've 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 jokingly called this poor fellow brandon fat for no yeah. reason just because <laughs> I've, I've heard it i've heard it um, Andy. we're aware yeah <laughs> Tell, we would love him to come on the show just so you know, he, he can he could yell at us um anyway yeah like i mean you could use him theoretically but then it, but that feels you know like you're you need someone backed up behind him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a yeah. challenge. I mean, they have, like I said, they have two, they have two good starting pitchers. And if you were willing to use those guys on short rest and just, you know, burn them into a crisp, like you'd have a chance, but that just doesn't feel like a good decision long-term. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, Andy, we really appreciate your time. Thanks. Uh, thanks for being with us today. This is, this, uh, this was fantastic. And we appreciated the cat uh, making an <laughs> appearance as well. We, Dude, we especially is... enjoyed that. <laughs> if there's anyone, I know that in general in the Phoenix area, there are a lot of feral cats. If you, if anyone would like <laughs> an extra cat in Phoenix, please send me a message uh, on Twitter and I will mail you my cat. No, Perfect. Very <laughs> wonderful. We'll, we'll help you great. out with that for sure. Hey, yeah, man, thank, thank you so you. much for stopping by. Thanks, Andy. Thanks for having me. See you guys. Man, that's uh, that's fantastic stuff. And I, uh, I'll, I'll say this much. I will... Uh, I, I agree with him very much there about the Diamondbacks. Like, it's hard to even think about the Diamondbacks and what they would do beyond that wild card round because at this point, that's our focus. That's where we want to get to. That's what we need to figure out yeah. first. You can't put can't put winning the next round before that. But you yeah. kind of do, right? You kind of do have to game plan considering that you are very short on starting arms that you trust to be out there. Yeah, but you, yeah, I mean, it's no, what you said earlier, though. You can't yeah. do that. You can't, right? You <laughs> and just they also, can't, like, literally there is nothing, win, win there's no game planning when, like, you have to start Zach Gallon in game one. You have to start Merrill in game two. It's like, that, there's not there's not nothing you can Let's do just win those games and then that yeah. makes it easy right? as, as we talked about though uh, a week or two ago yeah i don't think the diamondbacks are going to be able to start zach gown oh game true one, yeah uh, that's in, right in a wild card round it it still appears that it i, I think it's set up as you know bullpen game uh brandon well not brandon fought he, he would definitely not be available uh if he started the last game of the season which is what he's uh, appears to be on on track for right now so yeah it, it kind of looks like bullpen game sort of a deal in in a in a game one of the wild card round followed by gallon and merrill kelly they should be available for for the two games after that super encouraging is it it's gonna be really what Really fun is way it? to start the series, start <laughs> no. a playoff. Series. I mean, I remember, I remember you saying when we first brought it up, though, Sean, that you know, it, it's not maybe the worst thing in the world because if you well, yeah. win the first game, yeah, then it's you just, feel like you're in a pretty good spot. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and even if you lose the first game, it's not. Then you have Zach Davies, or Jesus. Well, yeah. Then you Zach have Zach Gallen. Davies ready to start <laughs> game two. <and> you <laughs> wow. feel fantastic. Yo, right? you know, Zach Gallon, <laughs> rotation then, eight. Zach Davies, obviously, ready to go. <laughs> obviously, at that point, you need Zach Gallon to show up. But if you get yeah. the game, like. The, just the idea of having Merrill there to potentially end a series is comforting as well. No, it is. It very much is. And I mean, honestly, this is, again, a crazy thought. But I wonder how this could potentially be impacted by the Diamondbacks kind of having a bigger lead going into that final series against the Houston Astros. I mean, I'm not I'm not trying to say that it's going to be that clear cut by that point. It 
probably is still going to require some wins in that series in order to secure the wild card. But if it doesn't, if they have a playoff spot secured, maybe, Here's a question. maybe Dallin and Kelly don't go in that series or, at all. Or would you at the very least consider, you know, you get to the la- literally the last game and you don't need to win. Like there's not like you have a yeah. game lead or two like, game lead over the Cubs or whatever yeah, or a game lead because you have the tiebreaker um, and you just don't pitch fought there. You do the bullpen game there instead. And then you do fought game one. I yeah. Consider that. Uh, yeah. I mean, Possibly. there's a lot of things I think to consider when it comes to how that what final would you rather series... do though? Would you rather have a bullpen game one or I mean, there's a chance that a fought game, it turns into a bullpen game anyways, but uh, sure, sure. I mean, he's going to be on a short leash, yeah. just like we saw all of the starters be on a short leash over the last week but i mean honestly the bullpen still gives me encouragement i just yeah. it's kind of like what he's saying about the starters i don't want to get too used to, i don't want to get the bullpen too taxed here yeah if they are going to make it into the playoffs just for i mean shit i might let uh sebi zavala go out there and pitch in the final game and just pitch the whole game just <laughs> Pitch yeah all nine innings. If, if, it, <laughs> if it got to the point where the d-backs had had clinched their spot heading into the final game then yeah you would not want to pitch there would be zero reason to pitch any of your high leverage right. yeah. guys jace peterson and, and sebi guess what you guys are yeah, going out there I mean, doing okay, work on maybe, you're, maybe you're not going to do that go <laughs> find a bunch of pitchers that just got put on waivers for no reason yeah the hey. team didn't want to pay their I one mean, day of salary yeah. remaining just that's a situation where you might go to you know bryce jarvis and yeah. have him give you several yeah. innings yeah. and have some of your other lower leverage reliever guys that's a great point give you several innings but yeah if if the D-backs are serious about having Brandon fought, you know, pitch potentially in in a game one, which is which is an interesting thought and something I'm sure we'll we'll talk more about here in in the next week or so if if they stay on this path, uh, then yeah, I mean you don't you don't want to waste any of your any of your big arms in that final game of the year. Well, we thank you guys for being here right now on the PHNX Sports YouTube channel. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure to do so. Sign up for notifications that way you don't miss whenever we go live. Leave us a little thumbs up just to know. You're here and you're enjoying the content. It's our attaboy. If you're listening on the audio podcasting side, please subscribe to us there as well. Leave us a review. We always appreciate that feedback. Big shout out to Andy McCullough again for joining us. He is awesome as always. He's so funny. He I really just, Andy he is, is one of my so, favorite baseball so writers in the world. It was so uh, there. We should shout out their show on, on the athletic baseball show. They have like different episodes that play every week, but I think it's on Tuesdays is the round table. And uh, I think I mentioned it yesterday. Andy, Andy's on it and yep. it's, it's, it's funny and just, you know, fantastic analysis and Super, something that I listen to yeah, every single week. Incredibly knowledgeable baseball minds as well, discussing yeah, sure. everything around baseball at a national level, but definitely check them out. Uh, also check out our friends at wink uh, for whenever you need just a wink of THC. How high will it get you? Just a little bit, just a wink. Uh, And that's W-Y-N-K on the wink. But uh, this summer was not a spectator sport. This summer, we were were all in this summer. We were were on the field. So make sure to grab an ice cold wink and go out and play. It's a perfect blend of THC and CBD. Uh, Of course, it's balanced, it's light, and it's social. Uh, There are no third-party producers. It has zero calories, zero sugar, zero alcohol. So it is a great drink. Tastes refreshing like your favorite flavored seltzer. And we'll get you just a... Just a wink high. Uh, available in either two and a half milligram or five milligram cans. You can find Wink right here in Arizona. Look for Wink at all Sunday Good Dispensaries in the Valley and Botanica Dispensary in Tucson. They're now in 12 states nationwide and even launched uh, online ordering and home delivery to about a dozen other states. To find the fastest way to get your hands on one, go to drinkwink.com. And again, that's W Y N K. Also, of course, baseball is fun, but of course, it is more fun when you bet on it. Place your first Bet MGM Sportsbook wager through our friends at the Bet MGM Sportsbook's mobile application of at least $10 and get yourself some free money. It's this easy. Sign up and deposit at least $10 into your newly created account, which you can do through the app or through betmgm.com. Uh, sign up with our code of PHNX. Place a wager in the amount of at least $10 at standard odds price. And once you have placed a qualifying bet, you will get those $200 in bonus bets regardless of the outcome of your wager. Of course, uh, we have been betting on the same game parlays, especially for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Get down on some of those. Get get down on some of those uh, giving up three hits nights, giving up uh, striking out two plus or more. Add all of those to your little parlay. Make yourself some money. Uh, make it Don't make it a little parlay. Make it a big parlay. Sign up for BetMGM. Use bonus code PHNX and place your 
first BetMGM Sportsbook wager through BetMGM Sportsbook mobile application of at least $10. You will receive $200 instantly in additional winnings regardless of your wager's outcome. Check out the show notes for full details and now listen to Shane, who we still miss dearly, talk about the disclaimer. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Colorado, D.C., Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Louisiana, Maryland, Mississippi, New Jersey, Nevada, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, Wyoming. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope ny 467-369-NEW YORK. Call 1-800-327-5050, Massachusetts. 21 plus to wager. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP, Arizona. 1-800-BETS-OFF, Iowa. 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help, Michigan. 1-800-981-0023, Puerto Rico, in partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. Visit betmgm.com for terms and conditions. U.S. promotional offers not available in D.C., New York, or Ontario. Well, we discussed it on our Twitter account yesterday, or X account. I don't know what to call it anymore. (laughs) Uh, But we discussed yesterday how it was a very good day for the Arizona Diamondbacks. It wasn't just a good day because the Diamondbacks uh, had the day off and could just enjoy themselves. But Or no, I'm sorry, yesterday they won. Uh, (laughs) But today is the day off. Uh, Not only did they win. but (laughs) uh, That didn't happen. Corbin Carroll, 25-50, that did not happen Forget that whole day yesterday. We will just uh, pretend that his historic accomplishment didn't happen. But uh, the Diamondbacks win. Everybody else we needed to lose loses. So let's take a look at that out-of-town scoreboard. Uh, Cincinnati is getting handled by the Minnesota Twins, by the way, which is exactly what we needed to happen. Um, Miami, eh, Miami won. Yeah, I I think this is the out-of-town scoreboard from two days ago. Yeah, I was going to say, this is not the updated one. <laughs> the but Marlins lost yeah, yesterday. Yeah, I was going to say, everybody lost yesterday. lost yesterday. I thought yesterday. that's what was the case. Then, Derek, I'm I'm a fat liar, and I don't You are that. a fat liar. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, no, I mean, again, like Jesse said, everybody lost. Everybody we needed to lo- lose lost. I guess the Phillies are the, the one team. The Phillies the did brand. win. And if the Phillies had lost, which, which as we talked about briefly on yesterday's show, uh, which they nearly did lose. If the Phillies had lost, then the Diamondbacks would be a game and a half out, uh, you know, for the first wild card spot at this point. Which, which is would wild be, because, yes. right? Like, we absolutely <laughs> thought that, you know, not only were the Cubs kind of like far, far away from the Diamondbacks, but, but that catching the Phillies was, it was a nice idea, but it didn't yeah. seem like something that was actually going to happen, right? Yeah. So, for the record, just the, uh, Mets beat the Marlins eight to three. You got the real scoreboards. Pirates beat the Cubs thirteen to seven. And where's the other one I was looking for? Phillies. Phillies. That one. Yeah, that one we talked about. Reds. Phillies. Reds and oh, Twins. Reds. Twins beat the Reds five to three. Yep. Yeah. There you go. Good day. Good, Good day, day at the office. For, the Pittsburgh. For the, the D-backs. The Pittsburgh Pirates remain the the main character of this yes, entire we are story. A Pirates podcast. We are are a Pirates podcast. Bucko. Let's go, Bucko. Well, let's see how those scores affected the wild card standings for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Because again, like is. <laughs> Yeah, let's, look. All right, there, there it is. Look, there okay, it is. hold on. <laughs> let's address this. Emma's our producer today, so let's uh, let's not ever blame Damon. This is all on Emma. <laughs> this is all my fault. This is literally an E. It's an E on E. Uh, no, so again, Diamondbacks one and a half games up on the Cubs, uh, and again two games up on the Marlins, two and a half games up on the Reds. That's the only thing I care about right now is how much how much padding do the Diamondbacks have to their playoff hopes. Oh, I thought right? you were saying specifically you only cared about how much they were up on the Reds. No, 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 no. I mean, I specifically <laughs> only care. I, I just, yeah, I want really. them to have two games or more up on the teams that are not in the hunt. And that, I think, is uh, is a good place to be, right? It doesn't yeah. feel like, like Andy said, like you literally miss 36 hours, you miss two days, you miss three days in, in baseball, and all of a sudden you turn around and, you know, things are completely different. That's been the case with this wild card race. Yeah, it's uh, it. I mean, it's still pretty crazy at this point, right? I mean, the Marlins and the Reds are right on the doorstep behind the Cubs at this point. Uh, but the Diamondbacks do have a a game and a half on the Chicago Cubs, which is wild that the Cubs are now trailing the Diamondbacks by that margin because. When that Diamondbacks Cubs series started uh, six days ago, the D backs were trailing the Cubs by two and a half games. <laughs> and I mean, even catching them through the entirety of the rest of the year seemed like a long shot. Now the Diamondbacks have built a little bit of an advantage over Chicago. It's, it's as you said, I mean, it's crazy how quickly these things can change. And uh, I'm sure we're going to see some more crazy changes in the next 10 days because that's just kind of how this yeah. goes. <laughs> you can't expect anything to go the way that you want it to go. Right now, especially, like I said, this this series with the New York Yankees, the series with the Chicago White Sox, it's on the road. Uh, it's teams that have nothing to play for, and, of course, that makes it extremely dangerous, right? Um, but what is good I thought is— the Yankees were still alive. 
Are they? No, I mean, no. I think mathematically they still are alive. They but. have. They could get eliminated <laughs> by the Diamondbacks, yes, yes. and I know that that's your ultimate goal oh, here yeah. to watch this no, weekend I, is I, to see the Diamondbacks eliminate the Yankees. Very much. I was talking Sunday morning, 10.30 game. I get to wake up at 9.55, throw on the Bills game on one screen, Yankee D-backs and Yankees on the other screen, and have myself a fucking what a day. day. What a day. What a day. I Let's cannot go. wait. I love those... <sighs> Some of my favorite moments in life where I just truly felt like I had ascended to the highest point that I could possibly ascend to was when I was watching multiple sports on multiple TVs in my own home. Yes. In a bar? Sure. That's what a bar is for. In my own home, I'm a god. I'm an absolute <laughs> god. Uh, um, but anyway. For the record, we really need the Blue Jays to beat the Yankees tonight or yeah, else the Yankees that. will have to or else the D-backs will have to sweep to eliminate the Yankees which i mean if we that's want to only sweep your them goal eliminate. that's your goal that's not our goal we don't well, care I mean, about that goal it would be a nice little how do you do, <laughs> do what well, fuck you Yankees we, we we beat you in the world series and we just eliminated you from the playoffs yeah. 25 years later yeah you're not wrong <laughs> you're not, 25, not wrong not about that Jesus, 22 mm-hmm. 22 but whatever uh but the Diamondbacks did move a little bit closer to those playoffs by the way let's take a look at uh of course this graph here that shows that the Arizona Diamondbacks playoff odds have reached a season high Love it. 84.7%. As Jesse can attest to in fantasy football, that's meaningless until we actually <laughs> get to the end because Jesse oh, at one gosh. point was up 99% as far as his <laughs> chances of winning a, a fantasy football game, and he did, in fact, lose that game. So uh, we've learned our lesson about that, haven't we, Jesse? Oh my god. <laughs> this, this this is mean. This is cruel. I was on call for I was never going to bring it there. <laughs> uh but yeah, uh, I mean to your point, 84.7% is not 100 and the Diamondbacks had an about an 80% chance to make the playoffs several months ago yep. when they were 16 games over 500 yeah. and doing all the things and looking like they were going to win 100 games or or some some crazy nonsense like that, right? Yes. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, even, you know, things obviously can change in several months and, and things absolutely can still change uh, here with with about a week and a half left uh, left in this season. So, yeah, I, you know, it, it's still remarkable, though. I mean, if we look at the graph one more time, I mean, just look at the look at the highs and lows that yeah. there have been <laughs> the last few months. August, the end of August or middle of August there. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yikers. Yeah, I think it was August 9th, I want to say. Is that, is that below is that 20%? Low point? That, yeah, I, I think so it's they had 13. Be, I, they, it's crazy that they wow. were at one point, like in a, in a decent chunk into the season leading the division or at least competing for the division. Correct. The D-backs and then, had the best record in the National League. In I think it was like June eighth. Yeah, like and then the you get to August, year. and they had a worse chance to make the playoffs than they did at the beginning of the season when people <laughs> thought that the Padres <laughs> yeah. were going to win the World yeah. Series. That's a very good like, point. Look at how low that how is. Does, I don't even know how that happened, season. but I mean, I do know how it happened because they basically lost a month straight worth of games. But right. it's, it's it really is just crazy how much of a roller coaster the season has been. But you know what I see here, guys? You see it too, right there at the end. You see that W? It's for wagon. <laughs> because that's, that's what the Diamondbacks are. It's almost <laughs> like this is a graph with a lot of ups and downs. That's how. Hey, I don't care. There's some it's, M's there's in there, too. W, there's a W at the end. That's where you could we find the letter you wanted to I in that graph. Find, I thought there was a couple here. Bs for victory. <laughs> you guys are monsters. Uh, but anyway, the, the Diamondbacks uh, do have done some good things, but have they done enough to make it onto our MLB power rankings of the top 10 teams in baseball? Well, the answer to that is no. No, they haven't. <laughs> Uh, but here is our top 10. <laughs> that was really <laughs> Derek. Those are top 10 teams right now in baseball. Uh, the Braves up at the top at number one still, even though they've kind of had their struggles since getting drunk and celebrating yeah, they're still uh, their very division. Much the uh, what, if, what if we just drop the Braves to like eighth? <laughs> yeah. Marlins well, own them. You, how can we put them behind the yeah, Marlins? Yeah, we yeah, put yeah, them yeah. The Marlins just beat them, and yeah. that's how this works, that right? Is, if one team beats another, that means they're better. That's right? absolutely how it works. All right, so we have the Braves at number one. Rays at two, Orioles at three, Dodgers drop down to four, or actually, I guess you should say, could say up uh, one from number four because they are five. They were at the fifth position last week. The Astros round out the top five at number five. Then you got Blue Jays at sixth, Mariners at seventh, Brewers at eighth, uh, eight, Rangers at nine, and Phillies at 10. Uh, And the Phillies, big drop there. Biggest drop of the week there for the Phillies? I didn't even realize I did that, honestly. I really dropped the Phillies four spots. Mm -hmm. You sure did. Yikes. 
Uh, <laughs> I meant to do that. I that, to is do totally, that. Yeah, that is totally what we meant to do. <laughs> no, I mean, like, if, if we pull it up one more time, I think that the... I, so part of this for me was that I have the Brewers ahead of the Phillies now. Yeah. Uh, last week we had the Brewers at number ten. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently I had the Phillies at number six. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there. I mean, there. It's still a very interesting question of whether you'd rather play the the Brewers or the Phillies in in that wild card round. And and you know, Andy just voiced his opinion of saying you'd probably rather have the Brewers out of those two teams, yeah. which I don't think is necessarily crazy. But if you're just if you're just looking at how those two teams are playing right now. The Brewers are playing really good baseball right now. They sure are. And Corbin Burns seems to have kind of figured some things out after his struggles earlier in the year. Brandon Woodruff is back. Freddie uh, Peralta. Freddie Peralta has been line. one of the best pitchers in baseball in the second half. And and this team is, as Andy said, they, they can't really hit, except for Mark Kana, who's come over and, <laughs> and is like actually been a pretty darn uh, good hitter I for mean. them. You put him with William Contreras and Christian Yelich. It's an offense that is still poor but is a little bit better than it than it looked a while back. So, yeah, I think the Brewers deserve some respect, even though it very well may still be the case that, you know, Diamondbacks fans would rather get the Brewers than the Phillies in that wild card. Right? Um, Elise has some questions yeah, about uh, the Orioles still being in first place in the AL East, but being ranked below oh, the Rays uh, on your on your power rankings. I, I will say this about the Rays. I am extremely impressed with what they've been able to do considering what they went through with one of their star players and how embarrassing that was and losing him, losing his production and still just not missing a beat, just rolling along and still. And I mean, it's the it's the Tampa Bay Rays, right? That's almost what their franchise is known for, losing star players and still finding a way to be successful. (laughs) Most of the time that's through free agency and losing them because they're not going to pay them the money. But uh, this team managed to, you know, to, to again, not miss a beat with that entire distraction going on. And I, I give them a lot of credit. For I, that. and I honestly, I would rather play the Orioles in a world series than a, than the race. Really? Like I, a, they've just got like deep Randy or Rosarena as a playoff player terrifies me. They, that's sure. just a guy who rises to the occasion. He really I just, does. I, I, if anything, I'm just going to bet on, taking advantage not that this is a strength of, of, of the diamondbacks but taking advantage of the orioles youth um not that the the rays are not are like an old team but obviously they have a few guys that have been doing it for a few years there um wait so elise's question was why are the why are the rays ahead of the orioles yes. is that what it was yes okay um yeah i mean they're really close it really could go either way i mean the rays have um the Rays are just, they're just a more experienced team, mm-hmm. frankly. I mean, the exactly. Orioles are very, very young. And, you know, I think some of the pitching that has been good for them, which they have had some pitchers who who have been good, those guys are not really proven in the same way that I think some guys on, on the Rays are. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's ultimately what it comes down to. Uh, I mean, we're talking about two are, games here when we when we're talking about what splits yeah, them, right? Yeah, they're really close in the standings. Yeah. I don't think you know the Orioles being two games better. I don't in the standings. I don't think that matters much. The Rays are, are have a run differential that's seventy runs better. They than have the, the Orioles' best run differential in the American League, in fact, at plus one ninety five, um, just under Atlanta's plus two eighteen. Yeah, Ooh, the Rays. It's gonna be interesting. The Rays have a series against the Blue Jays. Well, they, yeah, they beat the Angels today. That they play, have a series against the Blue Jays, two against the Red Sox, and then another series against the Blue Jays, who you had make a, well, I think like a two spot jump in your your power ranking. So the Rays, it'll be interesting to see what happens in the AL East there. The one thing that matters here, of course, isn't the power rankings, and it isn't the wild card standings. It's the All City Division. That's all we really care about around here. Right, we are coming, uh, and we are coming for you, Philadelphia. Just to let you know, uh, I still am on board with the asterisk situation, but Damon got me all fired up about saying, no, fuck yeah, it. Nah, let's just win energy. the whole yeah. goddamn thing. Yeah, agreed. And I am with that. So Diamondbacks now, least guarantee, guarantee for the moment, or actually I shouldn't say for the moment, for the entire season, they guarantee that they will at least finish 500 or better with those 81 wins. This is true. And oh, yeah. uh, of course, we got to get Jake from talking baseball back on here to to, to, I don't know if Jake will come back on. Yeah, the I mean, show. he might need to. We're gonna we're gonna <laughs> play the face, clip. Face the we gotta face the music. music. I I feel like he is a man of honor, uh, and he would come on yeah, to face he would, the music. He so. probably, he probably absolutely. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that we're gonna be classy about 
you know, are gloating or anything <laughs> like that. At least not this guy. This guy doesn't know how to be classy. Just real quick, because I brought up the Rays schedule. The Orioles play the Guardians, Nationals, and Red Sox. So I think the Orioles are the Orioles. <laughs> That's stupid. Anyway, um, I just heard someone open a beer from a distance, and it made me thirsty. That's <laughs> like a Pavlovian response or something. I don't know what's happening here. What's Max up? just opened one. Is that what it is? Ah, I need a beer. Um, speaking of beers, got to get ourselves some Four Peaks. Uh, Four Peaks is the official craft beer of your Arizona Diamondbacks. It is also the perfect beer for tailgates for over 25 years uh tailgates down kilts up let's go emma oh man it's gonna be really shooken up yeah, I, there's I no say, chance wait, i'm opening yeah. that on my lap but <laughs> that uh, seems like a bad idea <laughs> we'll it is pumpkin border season of course get in the fall state of mind with notes of nutmeg allspice and toasted pie crust and of course even on an off day, the perfect beer. You want to open this one since it's not yeah. taken? Can I open? Can I open that one? All right, I'm gonna slide it down. I don't know. Yeah, Emma just kind of ran around the room with it. Yeah, could, no. Well, I mean, oh, no, that go. one's fine. That okay. one's fine. All Emma, right. Emma can throw me beers anytime. She can be like the guy that tosses <laughs> stone cold beers. But yeah. uh, again, this is my favorite beer. Joy Bus Wow Week, because like I said, it's good for wins, good for losses, good for days off. It's good for all times. But make sure to visit fourpeaks.com/locator to find all of your favorite brewery tours and events at their Eighth Street Pub, Stein Holding, Oktoberfest, and of course. The Haunted Brewery Tours are right around the corner. It's almost spooky season. Make sure to check out Four Peaks Brewer at Four Peaks Pub to keep up with the latest Arizona's hometown brewery. Must be 21 years or older to drink Four Peaks, which I am. Please drink responsibly. Mm. Mm. Also, check out our friends at OG's Brands. Uh, that is uh, a, also a fa fantastic way to celebrate wins and losses. If you are stuck on what kind of gummies to get, just ask me and Sean. We'll we'll send you yeah. in the right direction. We will be your weed sherpas. Uh, also, if it's a flavor that you're looking to go after, make sure to check out how OG's Brands has made that decision 420 times easier for you. You can get a wonderful uh, collection of flavors in their fruits bags and their cream bag. Fruits have things like the red apple, watermelon, peach flavors. The creams have blackberries and cream, strawberries and cream, orange cream, skull, all of those Hall of Fame flavors in one place. That line, I have more problems with uh, every than time. any other every line. Every time you struggle with it. <laughs> Hall of Flame. It's nope. always the Hall of Flame for me. Oh, yeah. uh, Hall of Fame flavors in one place. Uh, plus, of course, the fruits and the creams are available in a sunny sativa or mellow indica. So make sure no matter the mood you are in, you can get an OG's experience that is right for you. Check out our friends at OG's Brands for yourself and try one or a few of their many delicious flavors. Check them out across socials at OG's Brands and online at ogsbrands.com to find them at a local dispensary near you. Must be 21 or older to enjoy and please enjoy responsibly. Uh, big shout out to all of our diehards, by the way. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for being diehards. If you haven't signed up for a diehard membership yet, go to gophnx.com. You can get all of our wonderful content over there, uh, and you'll get all of it as a diehard member. You also get access to our members only Discord lounge. You get access, or you get a free piece of merchandise from the phnxlocker.com, 20% off all future purchases, discounts with our partners, uh, invites to members only events, discounts on those events, and so much more. So sign up today. Of course, Jesse has a brand new article that is free and unlocked for everybody. So make sure to check that out because he went around to all of the Diamondbacks pitchers and discussed <laughs> with them their favorite pitching stats, which is an absolutely delightful read. You uh, will probably really love Paul Seawald after. after. You're if, going if to. You yes. like, if you like baseball stats, Paul Seawald is going to blow your mind. <laughs> is it, it, look, I have to ask, is it actually pronounced bacon? Is it actually Woe pronounced bacon? ex wo bacon? Yeah, you know. Or is, do you have to say the letters out? Because I want to say wo bacon, Jesse. W -O -B -A -C -O. Full, full disclosure, that's how I've said it like in my head ex -wo for, bacon? for years. Yeah, yeah that's been, how I read it. It has been ex because I can't help but see bacon in a word yeah. and Obviously. just pronounce bacon it and not that say way. Bacon. Yeah. Uh, but Paul went and during our conversation, he called it ex wo bacon or expected wo bacon. Uh, which Wobacon. I think, I think, I have which I think is actually yeah. the correct. If there is a correct way of saying a like sort of fabricated sure. word or uh, that's a moon from star wars or something yeah Wobacon? one of the two yeah one of, one of those two. yeah i think ex wobacon is is oh, the uh is the correct way of saying it. But yeah paul seawall talked about uh being a fan of ex wobacon being a fan of oo strike percentage and one one strike percentage is being a really good way of evaluating pitchers mm -hmm. and he said a lot of really interesting things about that so uh go phnx.com that's where yeah. you'll find it Check that out. Um, and when it comes to other people we are a fan of, we're huge fans of Tori Lavolo around here. Uh, oh, Piece of Yoshi says we spoiled it. We spoiled the article. Though I promise you, we did not spoil <laughs> the article. Go read it yourself. But uh, we also, are, like I said, are big fans of Tori Lavolo. We know what he has done for this team. We know how 
just good of a guy he is, and we know how much the players enjoy playing for him as a manager. But uh, now with the success of the team and kind of the expectations from the beginning of the season, we asked to, we have to ask the question if Tori Lavallo has become a top candidate for manager of the year in the National League, especially if the Diamondbacks do go on to make the playoffs, because that's been a key actually <laughs> to yeah. Diamondbacks managers winning the manager of the year award. Yeah, it's almost like uh, it's not like whether I'm not sure exactly how to say this, but it's sort of like if 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 the Diamondbacks are going to make the postseason, then Tori Lovello inevitably has to win manager of the year. Right. That's and it the, almost the feels like whether he wins manager of the year in a sense, this is what I was trying to get at will like determine if the Diamondbacks yeah. make the postseason. So like if we were able to round up like all of the baseball writers right now who are voting on this and ask them if the Diamondbacks were to make the postseason, would you vote for Tori Lavello to win manager of the year? And if enough of them say yes, that therefore is evidence that the Diamondbacks are certainly going to make the postseason. A foregone <laughs> conclusion. These are, these are like very closely connected. Uh yeah, we mentioned that with uh with Andy. Uh it was in 2017, Tori Lavello won it. Uh, in 2011, Kirk Gibson won it when the Diamondbacks made the postseason that year. And then the last time they made the postseason before that in 2007, uh, they also won it that year. That was Bob Melvin. So uh, it is sort of uncanny how this works. As far as how Tori Lovello stacks up with with the competition, it's not super obvious. Uh, there no. are a lot of good candidates here. I think the well, primary... It's like you said, because it's arbitrary, right? It's hard to look at you know, what a team has done, what they were expected to do, what the results were last year, and figure out who is the most deserving manager yeah. in all of baseball, right? You can't just can't just look record. You can't just, okay, who's the team? That's the biggest increase, you know? Like, in some cases, that's not necessarily a direct reflection of the manager. Sometimes they just yeah. went out and got players that made the team better, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, it is... I mean, Jesse said a lot of it earlier. Like, it is kind of just a... A silly little award because yeah you don't really have any clue <laughs> as to as to what like they do and like obviously I, I think there's a lot of Diamondbacks fans especially at certain points in the season who would have scoffed quite loudly at the idea of Tory winning manager of the year because of what some people deem to be mistakes that he's made throughout the year which is I mean valid but at the same time those people are I highly doubt are watching every other or every game of the other managers that are in contention yeah. for this award. Yeah. yeah. And like it's every baseball, fan base every manager has, makes mistakes. Yeah. And every fan base has problems with exactly. its manager. Exactly. <laughs> every that is just a rule of being a baseball fan in general. How yeah. can that you is be a baseball fan without being mad at your manager at Correct. times? I mean, that's kind of what tweeted. the point of a manager is. Yeah. If you it's, haven't tweeted to your team, fire, insert manager's name at least <laughs> once this year, are you even a baseball fan? <laughs> I don't know if you are or not, but uh, Tori Lavallo's record over the last five years has gone up and down. I mean, we know Lavallo had kind of some success early on when he was here. Uh, yeah. The Diamondbacks in 2019 had an 85 and 77 record. Since then, they've had a losing record every season until then. 2020, which who cares about, was yeah. 25 and 35. 2021, the second worst season in, in franchise history at 52 and 110. 2022, they were 74 and 88. And here we are this year currently sitting at 81 and 72. And it's like, it's weird because I don't know if that impacts people's decisions because it's not like Tory wasn't the man. You know, yeah, if he would have taken over last to, year yeah, yeah. and took a team from 110 and in two seasons made it a playoff team, you're like, this guy's a badass, right? But I mean, yeah. it, it, he was the manager during this entire kind of high and then low. Um, and I mean, maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe bringing him in and him having success early made it kind of like a, a high starting point and then a drop off and now yeah. they're kind of on the rise back up but and i mean like i know it's a year to year award but like if you're being real about like you look want it you want to talk about like tory as a manager like this is now two straight years where they have significantly or, or not maybe not significantly but have overachieved expectations and I mean, like i mean this is improving clearly, by 20 plus yeah, games per yeah. season i mean it, they could potentially do that clearly a continuation of the growth from last year and like i right. i certainly think like since this is since this award is what it is and like you can't really you don't know what happens in the clubhouse and you do kind of just have to base it off of you know like the narratives and the the over performing expectations like it it's hard to argue that Tory doesn't deserve that kind of credit uh or, or some kind of credit for that um but obviously I'm gonna be a little biased there yeah it really is just I mean going back to what we talked about with Andy 
like the most important things that a manager does. It's not just that we don't see everything. It's that the most important things that managers do are things that we do not see. Yeah, right. right. And that, yeah. that's what I was going to get. Because like you have the stat here about his success and challenges. But it's like <laughs> how much of that is Tory? Like obviously he's yeah, the one that ultimately the man, has, the man yeah. has a 25 and 13 record in challenges yeah. this season and for obviously, a 65.8% success rate. The you know, like what he's doing. he obviously at the end of the day could be like, I'm going to ignore our video guy and not challenge this or challenge it when he said not it's to. More like, credit to Alan Campbell. Exactly. It is like, Alan Campbell. And, and, like, yeah. and I, Jeff Bannister. And Jeff like, Bannister's a very important middleman. But in like, that we, have, we have a video yes. guy of our own that works here, PD, who went through this a lot as a manager or as a, as a video coach. Yeah. And like, if you don't, like, the coach didn't have much of a choice. Like, you got to listen to the guy. He's watching the play. Well, and yeah, I mean, you, like, you and, so that's, like, and that's what a coach or a manager's job at times is to do is to take in the information yeah. provided to him and make a decision. Right? Yeah. But yeah, you're right. You would be kind of silly to be employing this guy and having him do this job and not be listening to him and using yeah. the information he's providing but, you know, to like, try to win. My, my point bringing that up is just, so what Jesse was saying, like, yeah, like the the stuff that you're giving the manager credit for might not even be the credit or the manager's responsibility sure, sure. And, and the stuff that the yeah. manager should be getting credit for. You have no idea that's going that's on. That's very true. I and will so say like, this yeah. though, just about that. Like, Honestly, at times it feels like some managers in baseball just challenge everything. Oh, like Tori, Tori looks discerning, right, about what he wants to challenge, what he doesn't want to challenge. And obviously, part of the important reason for that is you lose your challenge, and you might need it yeah. at a more important time in the game. The other important part about that is it's like uh, when you're a complainer in in baseball or in, in basketball, right? You, everything's a foul. Yeah. Like the refs are just going to be like, "Yeah, the guy just whines all the time," right? So, if, like, if you specifically like have gripes at times, but not all the time. I feel like you're taken differently as a manager than some of the guys who might literally argue yeah, with the I, umpires, I, I for instance, like every single night. I, I'm, and I, I know with how this is going to sound based on my history with this manager, but like Tory is not Aaron Boone. I knew that was coming. <laughs> Aaron Boone is the kind of guy. It, it was coming. only a matter it of time before we got Aaron, Aaron Boone is like at the top. <laughs> when I think of managers who are like, seem like they're getting ejected once a week and are always having some kind of interaction with, with like umps and stuff like that. Like I think of, I think of Aaron Boone and I don't think of that. <laughs> Jesse and I were just watching a John Boy breakdown of Aaron Boone yeah. getting tossed from a game and, and it was you could, quite hilarious. It was, it was probably the best concept so I've ever seen You can in my probably life, find <laughs> 10 John Boy break. And I know they're Yankees guys, but you can probably find like 10 John Boy breakdowns. <laughs> Of 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 Aaron Boone interacting with managers, sure. or but like that doesn't happen with Tory, yeah. and like there's plenty of times where we've uh, some of us at least have basically begged Tory to get ejected to do something. We have we have in been the here. dark times to like we've, we've been light a fire during July for him that. to go like, out it, there. He's and clearly just... a different kind of guy in that regard so just yeah. go attack yeah. the umpire please is all we have uh, that's, that's all we want at times but again it's just to get us fired up it's to get the boys fired up we get yeah. it uh but there are some very good candidates for this manager of the year award there are some teams that really have turned things around much like the arizona diamondbacks and yeah. the managers deserve their credit they deserve their flowers for being a part of that i mean you have the the other wildcard teams essentially yeah. i feel like all of their managers Deserve to be in consideration. David Bell from the Cincinnati Reds, David Ross from the Chicago Cubs, Skip Shoemaker from the Miami Marlins, and then of course you have the best teams in the league in Dave Roberts and Brian Snicker. Right? If Brian Snicker wins Manager of the Year, I'm going to rage. Yeah, I you don't think that's going to happen. Uh, yeah, I don't think it will either. But you shouldn't get to show up to work every day with Ronald Acuna and the rest of that roster and win a bunch of games I mean, and then get the credit. The, for like, obviously, he deserves credit for them being good. But I'm just saying, like, well, and even Dodgers fans, when we talk about the fans not being against the manager, even Dodgers fans would probably say like Dave Roberts doesn't deserve it because he should yeah. do more with that franchise yeah, all the time. Yeah, but probably, but like, I, I, but like we said, Corey's the Dodgers probably winning the AL East with the with the Dodgers roster or the the Braves roster. Like I, I don't know how much Nicker or how much the manager. I mean, I, I really, I really don't. I know think I could win the NL East with the exactly. With the Braves I don't want to go right? that far, but I also agree. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I actually believe that. There's a lot of things about baseball that I don't understand. It would be utterly disastrous mm -hmm. to put me in that so position. Good, you guys got to put a good uh, staff around you. But yeah, if I had a good staff, who, who knows? But who what knows I was saying I about be. like Tory, right? Skip Shoemaker comes into Miami. He turns that team around from a, a you know 69 win team last year. To this year, now they're vying for the wild card spot. I mean, J Jesse and I also both put them up as the most dangerous wild yeah. card team right and now. I, I think him to kind of our point point about Tory earlier, him being a first year manager is going to play in his favor. That definitely does, right? Because it feels like yeah. you are more responsible for that turnaround than it would be if you were there during the tenure when the team was bad. Especially right? the Marlins. The Marlins just felt so hopeless. Like 
Yeah. Last year. They lost year. 93 games last year. Yeah, they felt that hopeless yeah. last year. And, like, I mean, that's not the case for the Diamondbacks. It's, I mean, it's, And that was with one of the best pitchers, or the best pitcher technically, in the National League. Yeah, right? that is true. Contra. Uh, but the Cubs, you know, what David Ross has done with the Cubs just this season. I love The Cubs were 10 games under 500 at yeah. one point. Now here they David are. David Ross, though, I mean, if they're – I know that we just said, uh, you know, every fan base has its problem with their has its problems with their manager – David Ross, I I've heard a lot of gripes from Cubs fans and, you know, just in general, that community about the way that David Ross makes up that lineup every day. Mm. Um, and, and we've even seen that. Like, I don't understand why Cody Bellinger bats cleanup. I don't understand why say Suzuki, you know, bats. It seems like fifth or sixth most days for them. Uh, that doesn't really make sense to me. Obviously, there's a whole lot more that goes into being a manager sure. than just the way you fill out the lineup card. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think what a lot of this comes down to for the Marlins, the Cubs and the Reds is which of those teams actually makes the postseason. Yep. Uh, if D backs too. Yeah. And, and the Diamondbacks. Absolutely. Yeah. If, if, if any of these teams don't make the postseason, then I think that kind of dampens the narrative a little bit. I think it's probably going to go to someone who actually took their team, not only turned around their, their franchise in a big way, but ultimately took their team to the postseason and uh, I mean, yeah, at this point between the Marlins, the Cubs and the Reds, I mean, they're, they're basically on top of each other in the standing. So we don't really know who that's going to be, but that's going to be a really big factor. A name we haven't brought up is Brewers manager Craig Council, and he's done an excellent job with the Brewers up there. They've pretty much clinched that division. I know it's not official yet, but the lead is fairly substantial. And yeah. the, the, I think the bigger thing about Craig Council is he he just like... The Brewers are like a more successful version of the Diamondbacks in a way where they just find ways to consistently be good, even though it doesn't feel like a team that should be win- yeah. winning the division as much as they are and, and be as good as they are at times. Yeah. Yeah. The Brewers are just, a, I mean, they're just a good team. They're just a, you know, a competent team, I think, sort of along the lines of what Andy said about the Diamondbacks. It's it's just a franchise that has a good reputation. And, and I think it really has ever since Craig Council got there. He's just been an instrumental part of that team just kind of being in the race year after year after year. And yeah, it's probably one of the weaker cases here. The the Brewers were good last year and they were, you know, expected to be fairly good this year. They they have outperformed their expectations by a decent margin, but not by as much as, you know, the the Reds and the turnaround they've had or or the Marlins and the turnaround they've had or or even the Diamondbacks and the way that things have turned around here in Arizona. I mean, the Reds were 62 and 100 last year. The Reds lost 100 games last year. And to be honest, the Reds have only been hampered this year by injury, right? Like if these guys could have stayed healthy and if it's a fair point and, and yeah. if they're young i mean their reds are going to be an incredibly dangerous team i feel like going forward in the same way the diamondbacks at least we we hope the diamondbacks to be mm-hmm. and i think the reds have even more going for them when it comes to young talent than the diamondbacks do but this is just one season right like jake mccarthy was an absolute monster last year uh, in in when he came when he had his final stint and this year he struggled so you never know how younger players are going to kind of adapt once the pitching kind of figures them out and such but that reds team looks like it's going to be fun to watch for for a long time just like this d-backs team is so i mean to try to figure this out i guess what we're saying is it's kind of impossible at this point i mean we have to know well how things end in the standings we have to know whether the diamondbacks make the postseason i think that's sort of a must for for Torrey lavello you already convinced me earlier this is a stupid award yeah, it is. It I was is I was here award. on the show. I was yeah. excited to talk about it. And before we even got to it, you proved to me yeah. that this is the I dumbest almost, award. I almost asked Andy after the conversation about it being a stupid award. I almost followed up and was like, all right, so so who you got? Who's going to win? <laughs> who's your uh, stupid winner yeah, of this stupid yeah, who, award? Who, 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 who you got in this race? Uh, but yeah, I mean, if the Diamondbacks make the postseason, Tori Lovello has a compelling case. Is that case more compelling than the third wildcard team, whoever that winds up being? Really hard to say. Yeah, I just don't know. It's going to be think, hard if it's the Reds, right? Yeah, like if it's, it's the almost Reds like and the they go from a hundred losses to being in the postseason, kind of out of nowhere. That's that's pretty compelling with the way that this stupid award is evaluated. <laughs> uh, well, it'd be like we skipped last season in a way, right? It would be like we went kind of just from if the D backs went 20, from hundred and ten losses yeah, straight to this, straight to the yeah, playoffs. Yeah. Like, of course, yeah, they deserve it, right? So, like, yeah, you're right. I feel I like I even think I even think Dave Roberts is probably going to get some love. In, in this I don't think he's going to win it but just what the Dodgers have have gone through this year yeah what they've endured all the ups and downs the, yeah the way they're able to kind of migrate these players into their system and have them 
be successful and 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 be co- contributors like it's crazy i know lance lynn yeah. came back down to earth but we we jokingly said lance lynn was going to be a cy young candidate when going to the dodgers and for like the <laughs> we first weren't joking, two and a half weeks I, I wasn't <laughs> joking at all i yeah. still have the calendar i thought i was i, uh, I was but, not um but thank god Very it didn't stay at that Lynn. level but uh all right well of course you know that whatever <laughs> whatever manager wins this award is going to need a good pair of sunglasses, right? That's that's bright the biggest future, takeaway from this bright future ahead, yes. bright future for his team, <laughs> and he can get those sunglasses from Shady Rays. Uh, gear built to last, of course. It's an independent sunglass company with a world class product that is much cheaper than the more expensive sunglasses, just as good, just as durable, and clear optics for outdoor adventures. Of course, you can also make sure to check out uh, their local. Uh, location here in town at Kierlin Commons. It's a full stop shop for all things Shady Rays. But of course, like we've talked about so many times before, the most important thing to remember about your Shady Rays is that they are backed by a lost and broken replacement plan that actually does not make any sense. It makes less sense than the manager of the year award because if you <laughs> <Wow>. lose <laughs> if you lose or break your I don't pair know about that. It doesn't make any sense to me. If you lose or break your pair even on day one, they're just gonna send you out another pair. No questions asked. Mm. No shame. They're not gonna ask you for details. Like every like, at least people want to know the skinny, right? What happened to them? How'd they break? Where'd you lose them at? How long have they been gone for? They won't ask you any of those questions. They just say, say less, fam, and they send you out a brand new pair of sunglasses. Uh, If you also don't love your Shady Rays, you can exchange them for a new pair or return them for free within 30 days. There's absolutely no risk when you shop exclusively for our listeners on this show. Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com and use code PHNX for 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 200 and fifty thousand people. I saw in our uh, in our Discord chat there was there was there was some shady rays uh, love being thrown around. Some of our listeners have all bought theirs, and they're loving loving their sunglasses. And of course, you could too if you get yourself a pair of shady rays. Also, stop by Circle K. It is America's thirst stop, and we know how expensive gas is, but it should also be America's gas stop. I don't know. It doesn't go as well as Thirst Stop. But regardless, go get your gas at Circle K. If you sign up for their Inner Circle membership program, which is absolutely free, you will save 25 cents per gallon on your first five Phillips. You also get buy five, get a six one free on a selection of Circle K products like pizza, coffee, and ice cold fountain drinks. Not to mention in the app, in the Circle K app, uh, if you're an Inner Circle member, there are so many more uh, benefits. There's so many more buy one, get one free offers that you can get down on in there. So do not miss out on that. Join the inner circle for free by downloading the Circle K app today. Terms and conditions apply at participating locations. Visit circlek.com for details. Um, and yes, I don't, you mentioned, as Cog says, you mentioned the Dodgers. I have expected Mo to appear behind you. Uh, yeah, Mo, <laughs> Mo won't stop harassing me through DMs. And he, he, he keeps he keeps sending me messages that just tells me, like, hey, you bet you're glad you didn't take that bet now, don't you? Yeah, well, I'd probably be <laughs> – I am sitting here in Brooklyn Dodgers gear right now as we speak, so maybe that's not – the best thing but um we're glad we're glad mo's not here we need some time off from mo Uh, but we are glad you're here and we thank you guys for being here of course make sure to follow us on twitter for more of all of this nonsense i'm at cap underscore caveman with a k sean is at sean underscore to pause jesse is at jesse and friedman emma uh is the maniac behind the mac today you can follow her at emma clark (laughs) emma ann clark emma ann clark course uh but we're still damon's dogs uh our show is at phnx <laughs> underscore d backs but of course all roads do lead to uh at phnx underscore sports on twitter instagram and facebook i will never stop calling it twitter by the way as long as i live uh, but that's all we got guys we thank you uh for your time we thank andy very much for his time uh for stopping by and of course chatting about baseball we love uh to have uh andy here and of course make sure to check out his book uh the last of his kind Clayton Kershaw and the Burden of Greatness. I know you Diamondbacks fans can't wait to get your hands on that, but that will be coming out soon. Uh, we, we Again, though, thank you guys so much for your time. And remember, kids, baseball is fun, but it is so much more fun if Tori Lavella wins Manager of the Year. Oh.